guys what's going on i'm out on the boat with victor we just got out here we are in 40 feet of water we went right out of hillsborough inlet we're basically kind of in like deerfield and we're gonna do some yellow tailing tonight we haven't done this in a while very long time we haven't been offshore in like ages no we haven't been offshore in ages and i also haven't posted a video in a while i'm sorry about that guys i've been really busy if you don't know i actually do canvas on boats and since hurricane irma there was a bunch of um destruction on boats like canvas wise we've been super busy so that's what i've been doing sorry i haven't been posting <laughs> well let's get to fishing so the only thing we brought for bait was this frozen bonita and normally when you put chum out ballyhoo comes so the ballyhoo are here so victor's gonna net us some ballyhoo This right here there we go. is beautiful, beautiful bait. You guys can catch yourselves. Good job, Vic. Thank you. Now we got fresh bait. Well, guys, it finally happened to me. I filmed a whole video all day long fishing on my GoPro, and I didn't get any sound from my external mic that I had plugged into the GoPro whatsoever. So you're going to have to bear with me doing a little bit of a voiceover, and I'm also going to show some video from Victor's GoPro that actually does have sound. So what's going on here, Victor's cutting up our ballyhoo in about half an inch to like three quarter inch size chunks and I'm using an eighth ounce jig head. So having current is pretty important while yellow tailing because you want your chum to drift down the reef and attract the fish and have the fish stack up in your chum line and come closer to the boat. Now with this light jig head, your bait isn't reaching the bottom, it's going down with the current in your chum line and the fish just think that it's another piece of chum. Now what I'm doing is I'm constantly letting line off the reel as my bait drifts down in that current. And when you get a bite, you definitely will notice and your line will rip off your reel and then you just close your bail and set your hook. It's a little hard to tell, but here's that line ripping off my reel. Close the bail, bam, set the hook, and I got a fish on. Oh, here we go. Yes, babe! First fish! It's a brutal runner. Oh, it's a porgy. That's good. That's actually a very good eating fish right there. This is Brooks porgy right here. I'm pretty sure it's a jolt head porgy. Very good to eat. White flaky firm meat. Oh, yeah. Yellow tail, they're coming in. Maybe a uh... Than yours. Yeah. Not big enough. Nope. So here's my first yellow tail of the night. They have to be 12 inches to keep, so this guy wasn't legal, so I let him go. But you're allowed to keep 10 per person, and they have to be 12 inches. Now I hooked a fish that fought a little better. I was hoping it was going to be a mun, but it ended up being a gray trigger fish. And you're actually allowed to keep trigger fish, and they're very good to eat. They have to be 12 inches to the fork to keep, which this guy probably was, but I let him go anyways. This is a porgy right here, and um, there's a jig head right in the corner of his mouth. I think Brooke might have one on too. Hers is digging. The yellow tails kind of make fast runs and swim at the boat, whereas muttons, porgies will kind of swim um, down and stay down. Oh, got a little mutton. Oh, no way. Oh, sick. And that's another cool thing about yellow tailing, guys, is you catch so many different species. We've caught a trigger fish. Brooke just caught a mutton. Here is a uh, porgy right there. Muns have to be 18 inches, so I let this guy go to grow a little bigger. Ooh, that's, that's a good a size keeper. mangrove. That is a keeper snapper. I that think that's like the keeper. sixth or seventh species we've caught now. That is a keeper mangrove. There you go, that's a nice one. Another thing that you catch while yellow tailing. That's a nice little sandwich. What you got, babe? Definitely a yellow tail. What makes you say that? Lots of head shakes. <laughs> I don't know how big it is. I don't know if it's going to be legal, but it's definitely yellow. Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah. Oh no, no. Oh, another no. mangrove. It's a good size one. Very good size. Well, we came looking for yelltails, but we're catching mangroves, but they're just as good. Honestly, if not better. Honestly, I like mangroves, mangroves better than yellowtail anyways. So. I'd say I'd have to agree. I think yeah, the right? fillets are a lot more firm. They are definitely a lot more firm. Yelltails are a little more flaky compared to mangroves. Yellowtail. There we go. No. Not, it's another, it's mangrove. another mangrove, but it's a good one. That's a bigger one. Hell yeah, yeah babe. Mangrove queen today. That's a good one. Little update, the bigger mangroves are out and about. I got one on too. Yeah? Thanks. I guess I, this, this is just... Be, this is going to be another mangrove or, an, or a yellow? This is just going to be a video of Brooke out fishing me a lot. I can't get a bite to save my life. She's catching them all. Oh, no, I'm thinking it's a big it's yellow tail. tail. There we go. Finally our first keeper. As my cashman would say, that's what we came for. <laughs> that's what we want right there. We there we go. Our first keeper yellow tail of the night. This is what we should be catching cast after cast after yep. cast. That was out really far. I was at my mono backing. Yeah. Sometimes right. the big fish sit in the very back of the um, chum slick and you just gotta let your bait go all the way there. You never know what you're gonna get. And we finally got a legal yellowtail. You guys, Brooke is putting on a clinic for me. She's absolutely killing me in the game. I think she's got a nice yellowtail on. I can't get a bite to save my life. I'm pretty sure she's caught four fish to my zero in the last like hour. I'm telling you, the trick is letting it go all the way back. He likes to let it go far back and then reel it in. I never reel it in unless I have a fish or I think I lost my bait. Until she's almost schooled. Yeah, basically. But it's obviously working. Uh-huh. It's a keeper. Nice Woo! one! Good one. Now that is the biggest one of the night. That's what we come here for right there. It's a solid 14, 15 inch yellow tail. You load up on these and you have an amazing dinner right there. Check it out. All right, so this is what we ended up catching last night. You're allowed to keep 10 snapper per person and you're allowed to keep five mangroves per person. So we ended up catching 10 mangroves. So that was me and Victor's limit of mangroves. And we could have kept five more yellowtail, but we didn't have to do that. And we wanted to come home because I had to work today. So we're gonna clean these up and then we're gonna get to cooking. Hey guys, welcome back to the kitchen. So tonight we're going to do something a little different. If you guys don't know, Victor does a lot of kitchen cooks too. He probably does more than I do. So tonight we're going to both do two different recipes in the same video. And we're actually doing this because we had a subscriber named Max come and bring us these bottles of wine from Austria. So thank you to Max. We've been waiting to do this video for a couple months and we're finally getting to it. In my video, I'm going to show you my recipe and then Victor's going to do a separate video and show his recipe. So you guys definitely have to watch that video after you watch mine. And we're going to just do our kitchen cook and enjoy this wine. So thank you, Max. What you doing, Brooke? <laughs> I'm crying. Why are you crying? Because my first step is to cut up some shallots and garlic and this is very strong and I am crying. So what I'm gonna be doing with my snapper is a lightly pan fried fish and then I'm doing a basil cream sauce on top. So I have some shallots and some garlic chopped up and I'm gonna chop up this basil and then some parsley. And that's gonna be part of our cream sauce. So this is the first bottle of wine that we're opening that Max gave us. This is the wine that you drink while you're cooking, and then we're gonna have the red wine to go with it, right? For dinner? Yeah, with our dinner. What is it? This is the white wine. No, this is the red wine. wine. Oh, this is the red wine? Yeah. So we're drinking the red wine now? Yes. Oh. So much Cheers, Max. Cheers, Max. Mmm. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> so the first step for my sauce, I have butter and olive oil melted in this pan, and I'm going to add my shallots and my garlic. And I'm going to let that brown for a little bit. So I've had my garlic and shallots sauteing for about five minutes. Now I'm going to add the rest of my ingredients. First, I'm going to add some white wine. 
So I want this to boil and once it boils then I'm going to reduce the heat. So now I'm adding some half and half. Now I'm going to add my chopped parsley and basil. And now I'm going to add some salt and pepper. some all-purpose flour here. I'm going to season it up and we're just going to lightly coat our fish in this seasoned flour mixture. We've got garlic powder going in and just eyeballing it. No exact measurements. Salt. And this way you kind of don't really need to salt your fish when you're cooking it either. And then last is pepper. This is a very easy way to give your fish flavor. A little crispiness and some texture. Now Victor and I are both using the same flour mixture to pan fry our fish. So the key to having crispy fish is to make sure your fish is really dry. So we're patting dry the fish before we put it in the flour mixture. Make sure it's nice and dry and it's not wet. And I don't want the coating to be too thick, so just a light coating of the flour. Brooke just put her mango snapper place into the frying pan. Right, babe? We got some right here. Just a nice little brown coating. And all I'm putting them in is olive oil. And then we're going to add the basil cream sauce on top. Alright, so my sauce came out a little thicker than I wanted it to, but it's still good. The taste is definitely there. I tasted it. I approve of it. I think it's good. It's gonna taste good, it's just a little thicker than I wanted it to, which is okay. So Victor made bruschetta on fish and he also did it on bread and then here's my fish with the basil cream sauce on top and if you guys want to see how Victor did this definitely check out his video in the description. So it's time to enjoy. Alright Max so we've had your red wine now we're on to the white wine. So cheers to you once again. Oh, I can't reach. Everyone like the fish? The fish was excellent. Brooke? It was very good. Brian? Fish was good. Forks up? Forks up. <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed, and thanks again to Max. He's the reason that this video happened. That was the first time we ever did a catch and cook together. Which we've been waiting so long to do yeah. for everything to work out the right way, and it finally did. It was a little crazy, both of us cooking in the kitchen, but it worked out well. Yeah. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. And don't forget to check out Victor's video, Land Shark Fishing, it'll be in the description so you guys can see his recipe.